Okay, so while the Brannevein is busy uh, running through the still, we have uh, aged our rum and made our rum in three different ways. So yeah, stick around and find out how we did it. Okay, hello and welcome back to another Beaver DIY day. First of all, thank you very much for everybody here that has subscribed and liked and commented. Uh, it really does mean a lot to us here on the channel. And uh, yes, thank you very much for the support thus far. It has been awesome. It makes it a pleasure to do these videos. And as always, it's a pleasure for me to do these videos. If you have any comments, any questions, anything, my email will be somewhere on there or in the comments. Please pop me an email. Um, we can have a chat about anything that you would like to have a chat about. Um, so yeah, like I said in the intro, we are doing our rum run today. And I uh, had a lot of questions uh, on running your still again, so I thought I'll just incorporate a quick synopsis of how I start and finish and do all those things within my distillation. As for the yeast video that, we, that has been requested, this is the yeast that I have captured from the rum. So you'll see the sediment has started forming at the bottom with a layer. I'll get a close up video of this. This is for the yeast capture video. Uh, how to wash your yeast video that we're busy filming now. Um, and then over here we have our rum. Now the rum has once again been clarified. Uh, I added bentonite into it and the sediment has dropped out. It is not as clear as the other washes, but yes, I did once again clarify. I just try and get the cleanest possible product into my still. Uh, the reason for that is the cleaner it goes in, the less likely you are to have issues when you are running your still. So cloudy distillate or uh, burping or anything like that, um, you have less chance of that happening in your still if you filter and clarify and do all that other fun stuff with your product and it just adds one or two days to the waiting period which is not that bad okay so yeah now first up we're going to transfer our wash into our pot or our boiler and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on both elements uh, at full blast and allow this pot to get up to temperature before putting the cap on so let's get into that transferred into the still once again I left about two liters at the bottom depending on how much sediment settled out leaving that little bit in the bottom there will not produce any more alcohol or any less alcohol worth than the trouble it's going to be worth when something goes wrong so don't be stingy leave the little bit at the bottom there. so what do we do with this that's left over in the bottom there all the sediment and all that um, that's up to you you can uh, put it into your garden, uh, throw it down the drain. You can save it for your next batch if you want to put it in there as a starter. You can do with it whatever you want. Um, what I do with it is it goes into the garden. It plants love the sediment and the bentonite. So yeah, cool. Now before I pop away and uh, get everything rolling, I've had a couple of questions on how I control my still and the answer is I use the speed controllers of power tools. So in South Africa to find a SCR or a voltage regulator at a reasonable price is a daunting task to say the least. So I went and got a couple of speed controllers. This is a speed controller for a 2400 watt router and it works a treat to control one of my elements which is 1500 watts and it works like a charm okay cool so uh, if you are looking to get SCRs or that type of stuff and you can't find them in your local electric stores a uh, tip from me is look for a tool or something that contains the part that you need and ask them to order the spare parts normally works out cheaper and 
easily to easy to come by so you don't have to scrounge around cool so that's it so first up what i'm going to do now is i'm going to turn on both my elements allow this to get up to 55 or 50 degrees centigrade and then i'll put the cap on and i will be stirring it every now and then okay so it's right on the money on 55 degrees if you're wondering what it tastes like it's very bitter and i when i say very i mean extremely bitter so it's time to cap it so how we're gonna run the rum run is we want a lot of flavors so if you can remember from the wash video we did infuse it with a couple of um, dried herbs uh, some star anise some cinnamon some cloves and so on and so forth if you want to know the exact amount check in the description so what we're going to do is we are going to run it in pot still mode but with a little bit of stripping action so number one what i did is on my column I did pack my side glass with some marbles and some ration rings. What I will also do is I am going to put two rolls of my copper mesh into my column. Just two rolls of copper mesh in my column nice and low. So in case this is going to burp, it's going to stop some of that burp going up. But hopefully it doesn't burp because we're going to run it nice and slow. So uh, two rolls in my column and um, a little bit of packing inside of my side cloth. So that's the only thing we're gonna run and we're gonna rely on some passive reflux to clean it. So passive is where we're not gonna push any water through the reflux section of my column. It's gonna be straight uh, pot still mode with a little bit of scrubbing just to remove some of those harsh flavors and get some clean cuts. Because uh, we're not going to run a stripping run and then a spirit run. It's just straight spirit run from the wash Okay, so we are we unfortunately had a camera mishap So we missed first drips and only realized that now when I want to change over from my four shots and heads jar uh, and switch into my first catch jar So yeah, this is our four shots. We took it off nice and slow as you can see, there's no more stinging around the tongue. So yeah, uh, it's ready for us now to change over to our first catch jar. So what I will be doing is, I will be running it through some coconut. So I've got a shaved coconut pieces here in a jar. I will be running it through the shaved coconuts into my jars and that will infuse some beautiful coconut flavor so that's our four shots in our heads remember to clearly mark them and close them what i'm going to do now is i'm going to leave this to run nice and slow nice slow takeoff speed not uh, too much and rely on the passive reflux that's happening and yeah we'll see you guys at the end of the run okay so uh next up let's quickly get into the tasting of the rum as you can see we have about 10 actually 11 jars so jar number one is our four shots and heads 300 mils of four shots and heads and then we run down all the way down to jar number 10 which i stopped at 28 percent so Jar 1 started on 75 and then we ran down 70, 65, 60, 50, 50, 45, 35, 30 and 28 and then I stopped the run. Okay, so why don't I run past 28? Uh, I just don't see the point in collecting that many tails and yeah, it just takes extra time for me. If you want to run your tails, yes please do it. Just a quick word of caution when you are doing a rum run your tails become bitter really quickly so if you're going to use your tails within your mixture or your blend do small cuts in your tail so you can choose what you want to add i will more than likely not be adding anything below 40 percent into my blend uh, purely because I tasted it as it come, came off the still and it turned bitter. So that kind of bitter that the molasses has, which I don't really want. So yeah, maybe, maybe not. We'll see how much if I add any 
But yeah, let's get into the tasting. Okay, so after tasting and blending, I added everything from jar one all the way down to jar, down to jar seven into my blend. Like I thought initially, 40% when I went into jar eight, when I tasted it, and I was still, it started tasting better. I thought, let me dive a little bit deeper into the tails because sometimes the, the funky flavors come out on that, but it just went bitter. So, I don't know if um, if I do a dunder run or a continuous cycle run on that back set, whether those flavors will come out in the tails, but for a virgin run, this three jars just didn't make the cut. So um, this little bit of liquor that we have here will go into our faint jar and that will be run at a different time um, when we add everything together and do a faint run. So yeah. Three jars is not the end of the world. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna quickly test our ABV to see what our ABV is on uh, the whole mixture to see how much water we need to add to get the ABV to roughly 45%. Okay, so everything mixed together is at 60%. So that is 60% ABV, meaning 40% of that is water that had those flavors and stuff from the rum. So that's a quick tip if you run a rum or a whiskey uh, or a brandy, try not to run it too high. Cap it at 80% when you take it off the still because you are just throwing away flavor and the whole idea of a whiskey or a brandy or a rum is to pull through flavor. So I'm happy with the 60% that I have here. What I'm gonna do is just thin it down with a tiny little bit of water, keep testing it till it gets to about our 40-45% mark. Okay, so that's right on the money, money on 45%. Okay, for those that are wondering what flavor or how's the flavors in this final mix, it has a nice hit of banana on the, egg, uh, the tip of your tongue then you go into that Wilson toffee flavor right at the end you start getting um, brown sugar and a tiny bit of that molasses um, sticking around and coating the roof of your mouth a nice and pleasant flavor if you like rum if you don't like rum then yeah um, I won't be able to tell if it's good or not but for me, it has some good rum flavors. Okay, so first up is a standard aged rum or a uh, rum that you can drink with Coke. So first, what I did is I made a nice caramelized sugar syrup. Um, if you want me to post the recipe for this thick poopy mess, please let me down, know down in the comments and I will gladly post a video on how I made this beautiful, bitter, caramelized, thick, syrupy soup. Okay, so like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some of this caramelized sugar. Now this is normal white sugar that I just caramelized, so I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of this goodness Try not to make a mess because this stuff is sticky. So I'm just going to mix it in the mason jar first and then I'm going to put it into my bottle. So uh, yeah, just want to get that sugar content to get all dissolved because to try and fit that goopy mess through that little hole, 
yeah, I'm not that good yet. Okay, so after stirring for a good long while to get all those sugars nice and dissolved, we have a nice golden syrup yellow rum mixture in our jar here. So next up what we're going to do is we are going to be adding this to our bottle. If there's any sugar left over, just Make sure you get all of that goodness. Straight into the bottle. Okay, so next up what we need to do is we need to add our wood chips before we fill it up. Because you don't want to fill it up with booze and then add in your wood chips and the whole thing overflows. So what I'll be doing now is I'll be adding my wood chips. Okay, so the wood chips I will be using is as follow. I know it looks like a lot of wood, and it is, um, but it's all the flavors I like. So I've got some oak here that has been toasted in the oven at 220 degrees for an hour. I have some oak here that has been toasted in the oven at 120 degrees for an hour. And then I have some oak that wasn't toasted at all. It's still raw as well as one stick of Korea that I got from Prohibition. Um, this stuff I added into my Nkumbuti whiskey and it gave an awesome flavor to it. So I really want to see what kind of flavors it will add to this year. So yes, it is a lot of wood and uh, is it maybe going to overpower it? I don't know yet. We'll see. So what I want to do is just add a one extra layer of flavor. I'm going to take the piece of raw oak and I am gonna give it some alligator skin. Okay, so when they say char and alligator skin, they really mean char the living heck out of it. And you want that char cold uh, pieces of wood on the outside, the wood all uh, breaking up and creating cracks and that type of stuff. That is what you want. Okay, so now all our other pieces of wood goes in and like I said, some are charred, some are not, some are cooked, some are not. I will put the exact ratio down in the description box once again. Always, always just pop me an email and I will give you the exact ratios and that little bit of smoke on the top there will just add beautiful flavor into this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to top it up with our uh, rum all the way to the top and then what this will be, this what, what will be happening, tongue tied, what will be happening with this is I will be cycling it with hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold for the next three to five days and that will then result in a semi-forced aged bottle of rum. Okay, so it will be ready to drink in about five days. Okay, bottle of rum number one done. Next up is a lovely coffee liqueur, okay, or a coffee liqueur or whatever you want to call it. So. Basic ingredients, some of the strongest coffee you can find. So if you have super strong coffee, then uh, get some super strong coffee. So we are going to be adding two heaped spoons of coffee into our mason jar filled with boil, boiling kettle water. Our beautiful thick syrup. A nice yeeped spoon of that thick, thick, beautiful syrup. Goes in. Maybe a little bit more. And then the last ingredient is one half tablespoon of vanilla essence. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to leave this to steep while we prepare the next recipe. So, the next recipe is one I promised my wife I will make her and it is a chocolate overdose of a liqueur. So, we are making a decadent chocolate liqueur. One whole can. Of condensed milk. One whole cup of dark chocolate chips. Okay so while we are at that let's just add a little bit of water to thin this down so you're going for about half a cup of water. So one quarter cup of cocoa and remember make a big mess while you're doing it because cocoa is fun to clean up. Smooth chocolate sauce. We're adding in two tablespoons of that. Seven point five mils of vanilla essence, just because we can. Well, that's just lovely. So, <laughs> okay, so now all we need to do is we need to allow this to cool down so when we add our alcohol, we don't evaporate off all the lovely alcohol. So, um, yeah, I'll give it a quick 10 15 minutes outside here in the winter or else uh, in the summer, just put it in the fridge for about 10 15 minutes and um, it should be nice and cold enough for you to add to your jars and then add your alcohol and you won't have any problems with evaporating alcohol. Cool, so see you guys in about 15 minutes. The coffee has cooled down to a point where it will not evaporate with too much alcohol when we add it. If you have the time, what you can do is you can do a cold brew of your coffee. Okay, so now we have our coffee in the bottom of our jar. All I want to do is I just want to give it a quick taste to see if I'm happy with the sugar levels in this. If not, I will just add a little bit more of my thick goopy mess before I add my alcohol. It can use a little bit more sugar. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more, just a little. This is to taste, remember, so make it the way you want it. I want it a little bit sweeter, so I'm going to add more sugar. Okay, so that's the coffee one. Next up, the chocolate one. So now, all we're going to do is pour our chocolate over into this. So that's the base of your two liqueurs. You have your coffee and you have your, you have your chocolate and you have your coffee. So next up, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add equal parts of alcohol to the volume of the liquid that I have here bringing the percentage up to roughly 20 to 22 percent ABV because of that being on 45. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to steal a quick taste out of each of these just to check the flavors and um, adjust accordingly. For me, these two are almost perfect. The only thing I would like more flavor on is the, the coffee side. So what I'm thinking of doing is adding the coffee beans back into this liquid and then filtering it out tomorrow morning. Hopefully that will infuse a more coffee flavor or else all I'll do is I'll add some instant coffee into this to get that boosted coffee flavor. But yeah, as always guys, thank you very much for liking, commenting, following and subscribing. If there's any recipes that you want me to try, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much and have a lucky day.